In late July, we spent three days in the desert of Nevada and California, trail and track testing the 2018 Polaris Racer XP Turbo Dynamics Edition, the first side-by-side -side with active suspension. Before our first ride, Polaris Engineering Manager for Suspension and Brakes, Lewis Brady, gave us a pretty detailed rundown on how dynamic suspension works. Our first full test on this unit will be out in a few days. Subscribe and you won't miss it. All right, hi everybody, I'm Louie. I'm uh, the Engineering Manager for Suspension and Brakes at Polaris. I'm, an, I'm a big nerd, so I'm not a public speaker, so bear with me here. This is, in, this is out of my element. Um, but anyways, uh, talk about the Polaris Dynamics here or Polaris Razor with Dynamics. This model is everything that the Turbo had last year, the 168 Turbo, um, but with the addition of, you get the ride command screen, so the seven inch display. It has a 900 amp charging system, so it's got more power this year than it ever has before. And then the big new thing is the dynamic suspension, and that's what I'm gonna talk about. Um, the dynamics has been like a labor of love for me. I was telling some people yesterday that on Tuesday when we announced it, it was probably one of the top three days of my life, and I have two kids, so, uh, you know, it's in there. I mean, I've been working on this for a long time, and the team has been working on this. We had a lot of people working on it. It's not something we just came up with or took lightly. I think we had the first prototype in, like, 2011, so this is something we've been thinking about for a long time, and it's just very exciting for me to get it out there. Um, the main thing with the dynamic suspension is it's electric shocks, but it's way more than just an electronic clicker. It does two things. I mean, it allows the, the user to adjust on the fly, their suspension so that is cool it does have that ability for you to tune it to your own ride but really the heart and soul of the thing is that it's, it's an intelligent system and it's taking in seven input, inputs from the vehicle and using all those inputs to determine what to do and it does that very very fast the computer on there is thinking at 200 times a second um, the shocks themselves are a little bit slower they can only react from full soft to full firm in 40 milliseconds so it takes 0 0.04 seconds the computer's a little bit faster than them but it's still very fast uh, it's a lot faster than a screwdriver and a clicker that's for sure um, so I, I guess if we want to this is probably it's easier to see right here that this is the the shock and you know Fox did this design this is this is them completely it's 95 percent of the shock is a conventional Fox shock. I mean, it, this is still the same body. It's got a piston with valve stacks in there. You can take these apart. You can rebuild them. You can change the valving if you want. If you want to make the whole system a little bit stiffer, a little bit softer, you can still do that, and the dynamic system works. But the real change is this right here. I mean, essentially, they took the clicker valve assembly out, and they put in this, this valve. But this is more than just a low-speed clicker, a high-speed clicker. It, it adjusts both. Um, there's a nice video that Fox has out uh, on their website that shows kind of how that valve works. But this is the heart of it, and it's changing just compression damping, but it's a huge range. Um, the range is about double what either this Fox Bypass or that Walker Evans shock is. We're, because it's electronic and we can control what it's doing and when it's doing, we're able to make the shock softer than it's ever been before, and we're able to make the shock stiffer than it's ever been before because it's not in the user's control and, and we can keep it safe. So. Um, the other thing, here's the uh, control unit, so the actual logic and the, the algorithms and the electronic portion of the system was done completely internally at Polaris, that is our system. The brains that make it work is done at Polaris, is worked on by Polaris engineers. This is what we call the suspension control module, or the SCM, and it's located um, basically right below the, the uh, ride command screen. It's close to the center of gravity. Inside here is a uh, three-axis accelerometer and a three-axis gyro. So this vehicle or this little computer, along with the GPS inputs, knows exactly where it's where it is in space and what the vehicle's doing. It knows what angles it's rolling to, and it knows how fast it's getting there. So that's what that's a major input to the shocks to tell them what to do. That's how it knows when it's jumping. That's how it knows your counter steering. Um, but to to make that work, there's other inputs as well. There's the steering input. So the power steering unit uh, has a, uh, actually a more accurate steering sensor in it that tells the system exactly when you're turning. And so it knows if you're turning left, I gotta, I gotta stiffen up the outside shocks um, so that you have less body roll. If you're turning right, it does the opposite side. Uh, the other input would be brakes. When you hit the brakes, it instantly stiffens up the front end uh, to keep you from diving. The other thing that's really cool about the brake input is uh, I don't think you could probably put this in all your magazines, but we call it the oh shit feature. So they won't let us put it in the owner's manual either. But that, in engineering, we refer to that 
because if you tap that brake and let go, it keeps the front end stiff for a full second and a half. And what that does is if, say, you see a pothole or a, a stick or something in the trail that surprises you, you can just tap that brake. You don't have to ride the brake through the event, but if you tap it, it makes the front end stiff and it won't crash through. It's kind of a really neat feature that we we found out through development by accident almost, but that that's something once you learn to use that, it's awesome. Um, and then another input would be acceleration. When you hit the gas, the rear end, it's gotta be more than 95% throttle, so it's only when you're really mashing on it, it stiffens up the rear shocks to keep you from squatting. Um, and then there's any combination of those. So if you hit the brake and turn, it's gonna really stiffen up the outside front corner. Uh, same under acceleration, it'd be the outside rear corner. So it, those, those three features are working together to keep the chassis flat. The other thing the system does is it monitors speed. And so you'll notice today, like if you put it in comfort mode and you're driving around under 20 miles an hour, it's just gonna be all zeros. And we've had some dealers say, it's not working. Well, when you're going that slow, you don't need any damp. You want it to be real nice and plush. The body's not gonna roll in a corner. So, but as you speed up, it'll, it'll start to, to move up and it'll get stiffer for more body control. And it does that in, in sport mode as well. Uh, that brings me to the three modes. There are, there's the mode switch. This is an example of it right here all the way down is comfort. That's really where I think 80% of customers are gonna to wanna to be. That keeps the suspension as soft as it can be most of the time. It only stiffens up when you need to, when you hit the brakes, when you corner or it detects that you jump. Um, I forgot to mention the airborne feature I'm talking about jumping now. That's another feature. Um, the IMU, like I said, knows you're jumping and then no matter what mode you're in, when you hit the air for more than a quarter second, it's gonna make all four shocks go right to 10 or full stiff. And so that way you just don't bottom out on landings. You can jump this vehicle farther than any other Razor we've had if you have the skill level. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't keep you from flipping over or something, you know. But, uh, but no, it, it's awesome because you can run it in comfort and be just completely plush, hit a 50 foot tabletop, land that sucker, and immediately after that go over a bunch of curbs or something, it'll be soft again. Because after you land, I think it takes about half a second, it stays stiff to settle out any bouncing and then it goes right back to the soft mode that it was in. Um, getting back to the modes, I already mentioned comfort. The next one up is sport. What that does is it bumps everything up about 30 to 40%. So it's still doing all the same thinking that it was in comfort, but the overall, the base map is just a little bit higher and, and everything's stiffer and that gives you better handling. So you'll notice in sport mode, there'll be a lot less body roll. It's great for like cruising fire roads and stuff like that where you don't mind, it's not really harsh, so you don't need the comfort but you just need expert handling. Firm is in a way a ridiculous mode or ludicrous or whatever you want to call it. Um, you'll find out here it's probably pretty terrible because what that does is it locks all four shocks out to, to 10, which is very stiff. And if anyone came over here and tried to push on this, you'll notice you got to be about 250 pounds to even move it and stiff or when it's in firm mode. But that mode is nice for if you're coming across a section of trail that's just really rough and uh, you know some whoops that are all out of time uh, some of our test drivers like to just pop it into firm and step on the gas and just you know pound through it knowing you're not going to bottom out um, otherwise we found that firm works really really good in rock crawling it gives you kind of an added benefit of a uh, ride height and when you're crawling over the rock stuff you don't bounce as much and smash your skid plate so it, it was something we noticed during development it works great for rock crawling uh, the other reason it's there is for the demo mode which I'll try to walk through here quickly. There's a lot of you, but hopefully you can all see. And I'm gonna move over to the to the vehicle and get inside. Probably come around back as best you can, guys. So it's three axis. Gyro and three axis what? Accelerometer. Accelerometer. Yeah, so it knows it knows acceleration of the chassis, longitudinal, lateral, and vertical. And then the gyro is the angular acceleration, so it knows the yaw, pitch, and roll as well. It's basically, we call it an inertial measurement unit, the IMU that's inside that. That's what's in the smart bomb and all these uh, drones and stuff today. And it's also in your cell phone. That's why you can play the video games or you do all that. They, got, they basically have an IMU in every cell phone. So they, that's made the price come way down in the last 10 years. I lost my voice, I've been so excited over the last few days talking about this. <laughs> but, <laughs> so when it comes back, when you turn the key on, there'll be this warning screen, you just hit okay. 
the same screens that were on ride and or on ride command are still here so it's got your regular speedo screen your analog looking screen there's just an additional one it's got the little picture of the shock for the dynamic screen and this we put this in here because this really helps show how the system works and you guys will get to play with this today obviously um, I think most people is after they've had the vehicle for five minutes they're going to be on GPS or speedo and driving like normal but at first it's really kind of cool to watch and see how it's how it's working and this is also a good way to diagnose the system to make sure everything's working fine um, but just if you have it in park and the key on it goes into this demo mode so you can kind of show how it works so I have it in sport right now you can see the comfort it's at it's at one or it'll start at zero actually when you're actually driving it sport mode is going to bump everything up about 30 or 40 percent um, and then firm just locks it out at full 10 and you can see the colors change from uh, green to yellow to red depending on how stiff each shock is other thing to note over here on the right is your steering position so when you turn the system knows which way you're turning you can see how the shocks are changing I turn to the right or I turn to the left the right shocks get stiff I turn to the left or to the right the left shocks get stiff and then if you hit the brake the front gets stiff and like I said right now oh shit I hit it it holds for a second and a half and that's that's fun <laughs> um, and then the acceleration you see the throttle over here on your left it doesn't doesn't actually act, affect the rear shocks until you get about 95 percent of the throttle so you've got to mash it all the way to feel that anti-squat is that demo mode on all the units yes it is as long as it's in park it's built into the system um so and then there's any combination of these like i said i like to put it in sport here and do this and it looks like a christmas tree changing colors and stuff but uh, you also uh, call that winter mode. You're sitting in your garage and feeling like Yeah, <laughs> there you go, winter mode. Well, he's working the winter too. <laughs> Make sure you don't miss our upcoming test and future project on the 2018 Polaris Razor XP Turbo Dynamics Edition by subscribing to UTV On Demand. Check out our projects and product test videos for ideas on how to trick out your current ride. And as always, thanks for watching.